In today's trip down memory lane, aka revisiting all the palettes that I purchased in this past year, we are going to do a look with the Guerlain Ombre G Quad in the shade... I already forgot what the shade is. The shade is Royal Jungle. It is essentially basic beach browns and a gold. You will see a theme running like a common thread between all the small palettes that I purchased this year that I didn't even realize until I thought about it a bit more actively. They're all browns. Apparently when it comes to smaller eyeshadow palettes I like them to be neutral. What can I say? The brain works in mysterious ways. Anyway, I'm going to start doing my makeup and I thought it might be fun while I apply my makeup to do like a little tag. And I was looking around for what sorts of like tags have been floating around and I very conveniently noticed that Charlotte Holtcroft posted a video which was called something like makeup first tag. I have no idea who created this tag and if I'm being completely honest with you I have the feeling like a vague memory in my mind that I've talked about this topic before but I couldn't really find a video on my channel that was specifically makeup first tag so it's possible that I'm redoing a video that I've done before, but you know, most of you probably haven't seen it. You're not going to go look for it, so you know, let's just have fun and do it again. <laughs> Question number one. What first made you interested in makeup? I don't know that there was a thing that made me interested in makeup, but I would assume that it's my mom's makeup that got me into makeup. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't actively recall my mom ever using makeup because she had like a little accident with one of her eyes becoming super inflamed over like a New Year's Eve or something when she was wearing some sort of makeup and after that she kind of got scared off of makeup and I have actually never seen her use makeup. I think in her youth and when I was very young she did used to wear makeup. I've actually seen photos of her wearing makeup and obviously I dug out those first like makeup items that got me into makeup from her um, drawers but I do not remember her wearing makeup and I remember the little like pot eyeshadows well they were not pot eyeshadows they were single eyeshadows and I want to say they were from a luxury brand because I think they were a gift from um, like a family member who had gotten them in the United States, which was a really big deal at the time. Let me just paint you a picture. We're talking about communist Bulgaria completely like closed off from the world and specifically the big bad capitalist West. And you know US as the true manifestation of evil. So it was really difficult to get a hold of pretty much anything that wasn't made either within Bulgaria itself or the Soviet Union. And every now and then people would get things from like um, family members around the world or people from Western countries would visit and bring them nice things. The point was that she had these like little like um, single eyeshadows and I remember they were in white pots and they had some sort of like a logo or monogram on them. I have absolutely no idea but I, they were they were from some sort of a luxury brand and she had like a deeper blue and an anthracite gray color and those were the first two items that I ever like played around with in terms of makeup because she wasn't using them anymore and I want to say that for quite a while I actually had these eyeshadows and they were like only a there was only a little bit left on like the um, edges of the actual pots uh, by the time that I was done using them. The ironic thing is never saw her wearing makeup but it was her makeup items that first sparked my interest into makeup at all. By the way, I'm not going to mention any of the products that I'm using so that we don't have to be too distracted. Maybe I'll show you like the face products um, and I will definitely leave them in my description box. I've been trying to be good about that as so much as possible but can't make any promises. Anyway, uh, question number two is what was the first makeup you ever remember applying? And this is... Well, not really a hard one, but it really depends on whether you qualify lip oils as a makeup product. Because I'm pretty sure that the very first like makeup adjacent product that I ever had, bought and used was in primary school when we had these little rollerball lip oils which had different like fruity scents to them. And I'm pretty sure that was the first makeup item to ever be put on my face. And if we don't count the lip oils 
as my very first makeup item because mm, is lip oil really a makeup item? <laughs> then the first true like makeup item that I remember ever applying was mascara. One of my friends uh, during like a summer holiday when I was probably around the age of 14 or 15 got me into wearing mascara. We had this like little store in our neighborhood like the kind of stores that sells everything from pajamas to trinkets and makeup and um, they were selling makeup from a brand gold, called Golden Rose which I believe is a Turkish brand and um, Golden Rose had like a variety of colored mascaras and I remember I don't know whether my first mascara was actually a black color it might even not have been a black color maybe it was like a dark brown and I clearly remember having like a nice dark royal blue mascara so if we don't count the lip oil then 100% it was mascara it is the time of the month and my skin is looking a little bit haggard so I need uh, a powder that is a bit more like l luminous in finish because I noticed I think in one of my previous videos I put out for the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish powder I hadn't used it in a while because I kind of focused on the Gucci one and I noticed how much more mattifying that Charlotte Tilbury powder is compared to the one from Gucci the one from Gucci is really much more of like a natural it's not really a luminous finish but it's much more of a natural finish whereas the Charlotte Tilbury one is like poof all luminosity gone so today going for the Dior uh, Backstage Powder. Question number three, who was the first makeup YouTuber? My phone is there where I'm reading the questions off, if it wasn't clear why I'm looking down. Who was the very first makeup YouTuber you remember watching? That one is also not a story that you haven't heard before. The first YouTuber I remember clearly watching is Marlena who is maybe better known as Makeup Geek. Her channel was extremely popular around the time that I was you know starting to get into makeup youtube because she was she's one of the ogs for those of you who have been around makeup for a while you know about the brand makeup geek who also used to sell makeup until relatively recently and uh, marlena was the very first youtuber that i got into watching because she i don't know she had that like very like positive energy about her she explained things very well and i was looking for someone to help me you know do a decent job at my wedding makeup because at the time even though i was someone who already enjoys makeup quite a bit i didn't really like apply that m many variety of products for example i used to do uh, on my eyes i remember I had these little like single eyeshadows from maybe they're maybe maybe they're going to ask about this in a bit and I don't know why I'm rambling about it but anyway I wanted to say it because otherwise I will forget but um, at the time before I got into YouTube makeup YouTube I had like those few single eyeshadows from the body shop I really liked they're like metallic eyeshadows beautiful formulas I don't know if they still have them I had like a dark brown like a light pink and maybe Oh, and I also had this like longish type single eyeshadow from Bourjois in like this teal bluish kind of color and those were like the few things that I would use all the time and I had it wasn't even a brush it was this little like sponge applicator and I would apply like the light pink eyeshadow on the inner part of my eye and the dark brown eyeshadow on the outer part of my eye not really all over my lid because you, eyeshadows used to crease a lot on me and I didn't even know of the existence of eyeshadow primer if eyeshadow primer even existed at the time we're talking like prior to 2013 and if I'm not mistaken I even managed to pan these single eyeshadows from the body shop and I repurchased them anyway so I used to do that mascara and on the rare occasion maybe a lip gloss I think I had like one or two lipsticks that I wore very very rarely because I just didn't feel comfortable wearing lipstick so that was the extent to which I was doing my makeup so when I decided to do my makeup for my wedding I really had to like dig a little bit deeper like find out things about foundation powder blush that kind of thing do my eyes properly what kind of lipstick am i going to wear and that's how i fell down the rabbit hole i'm going to take my uh, beautiful gucci bronzer here and move on to the next question question number four who was your first true makeup muse who is are your current makeup muses okay i'm not entirely sure what they mean by this question but i'm going to interpret it as someone who inspired me with their makeup style and i tried emulating their makeup style 
Um, so it was Marlena, but my more vivid memory is actually of Tori from Biohazardous Beauty. If you've been around YouTube for a long time and you know your indie makeup, you probably know Tori, but Tori hasn't really posted content in many years. However, back when I was starting and I was also getting into like colorful eyeshadows, I found Tori's channel and I used to enjoy her, you know, makeup looks and her like very chill down to earth energy so much that I would rewatch her videos. Uh, especially at moments where I felt a little bit down, I would always rewatch her makeup tutorials. She made me feel better. I really enjoyed her channel. She's a lot younger than I am. She's very artsy. She has a completely different like aesthetic compared to me. She's much more like, she has a much more like uh, alternative goth aesthetic, but she's just such a like down to earth, good person and she made the most beautiful colorful eyeshadow looks she still does by the way i can link her instagram uh, down below because she still posts regularly on instagram she still uses a lot of indie eyeshadows she was also the one who got me big time into sugar pills for a current makeup muse i don't know that i really have one in, in not in the same sense that i admired tori for example tori was such an inspiration to me and i truly consider her to have been my muse at the time but right now i think for a variety of reasons there is no one that i would consider my makeup muse i have developed a little bit my own makeup style i know what uh, works for me and I don't really look out to other people to change much of what I'm doing every now and then I will switch it up a little bit but for the most part I'm pretty comfortable and set in my ways and second of all I don't really know that there's anyone on YouTube that really inspires me that much to be honest I enjoy watching a lot of people's content but in terms of like makeup style I don't know that I know anyone who has who does their makeup similarly to me and I feel super inspired by them Alright, I haven't used Desert Orchid in a bit and I'm starting to feel like withdrawal symptoms, so we need to use Desert Orchid today. Uh, well, answering question number five. What was the first higher-end makeup product you ever bought? Oh, that one I know. That's that Shiseido Trio that I mentioned earlier. And the Shiseido Trio was actually something I bought uh, because I was looking specifically for an orange eyeshadow. I wanted to have an orange eyeshadow, I can't remember the reason, maybe it was summer and I wanted to have something warmer toned, maybe I had seen someone wear orange eyeshadow and I felt inspired, I have absolutely no idea. But all of a sudden I had to have an orange eyeshadow and obviously I went to the drugstore first because to be honest with you, that's where I used to get my makeup. I was not someone who used luxury makeup at all because I didn't really have the means for it. But I couldn't for the life of me find an orange eyeshadow in the drugstore. And then uh, the other item that I was on the search for was an eyeshadow primer because I had heard from someone that there exists such an item called eyeshadow primer which can prevent your eyeshadows from like ending up here in your crease after a few hours which was absolutely revolutionary for me at the time we're talking like 2009 or so so i went into douglas um, a store here that carries more like luxury type brands to ask for an eyeshadow primer and the orange eyeshadow let's use this melting powder highlighter from suku because i've been forgetting about it and i uh can't remember whether the eyeshadow primer was also from Shiseido, but I remember the uh, eyeshadow trio was 100% from Shiseido. It was um, light silver, a dark gray black, and a straight up orange, all in a metallic formula. And I used these three eyeshadows to death. I used them so, so much. They, they all had huge dents in them, specifically the gray and the black, because I used to do like my little, like, little om ombre liner. I think it was essentially an ombre liner what I was doing. I did use the crap out of that trio and I decluttered it relatively recently, maybe like two years ago or so. Spritzing my sponge with a little bit of Fix Plus. Question number six. What was the first makeup purchase you waited for and bought the second it was released? Okay, it's been quite some years, so my memory here might be getting a little bit fuzzy, but one example that I can clearly remember of new items that were being released that I was really excited about and I was on the website at the time of the release was Sugar Pill, circa 2014 or something. They were releasing these like uh, pigments. I might even still have the pigment that I actually bought at that release. Um, 
that I'm decluttering, of course, because I never use it anymore. But I really wanted to have it. It's this beautiful, like, bright blue, royal blue with purple sparkles in it. It was called Halotronic. And I remember these were being released and um, a lot of the colors sold out quite quickly. So I think that was the very first release that I truly, like, anticipated. I knew things would sell out and I was there on time to get what I wanted. So let's now move into the eye look and I'm just going to do what I pretty much always do with this quad. So my favorite look that I get with uh, these eyeshadows is a brown look. But it's like a really good brown look. And I adore the texture of this dark brown eyeshadow. So all of these are in the Pex Gelee formula. They feel very similar to the Tom Ford Wet and Dry formula. Very similar to like a lighter weight version of the Pat McGrath Blitz eyeshadows. They're just so impeccable, easy to work with. Um, again, just like the Tom Ford eyeshadow formula, these are not super sparkly, although I think this one is a bit sparklier than everything I have from Tom Ford. And I really like the tones of this uh, brown shade. I really like this toppery moment over here. I don't use this gold shadow all that much. It's just not my favorite gold. And when I long for this eyeshadow quad, it's usually to do my brown look which I pair with some sort of like an inner corner pop of color and today we're actually also going to do a little pop of a lower lash line color. So I'm going to do my brown look because I enjoy my brown look so much and what I was saying about this eyeshadow, this eyeshadow is phenomenal. It's one of those like cream to powder dark eyeshadows that has essentially no fallout. It's so easy to work with. It's such a pleasure to work with. I just adore it. And I pretty much always like start my eyeshadow looks with that uh, shade as I usually do when I have like my little like liner moment going on. So that is what I'm going to do today as well. And moving on to question number seven. What was the first time you had your makeup done by someone else? Did you like it? Well, gosh. I don't know that I remember ever having let anyone do my makeup. Once, when I was home in Bulgaria, I went to visit one of the Mac stores because one of my Bulgarian makeup blogger friends worked there. Uh, after I started my blog in 2013, I found this community of like Bulgarian makeup bloggers. And for those of you who don't know, I originally come from Bulgaria. That's why it's specifically Bulgarian YouTube makeup bloggers. And I just connected with a couple of them. And uh, one of them was this girl who was at the time in like a makeup school in London. And then she moved back to Bulgaria and she started working as a makeup artist for MAC. She has moved on from that. I think now she teaches actually how to do makeup. Um, but she was working for MAC and I remember visiting her at the mall in the MAC store. And I think I let her do my makeup. But for the life of me, I cannot remember how the makeup turned out or whether I had feelings about it. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it was nothing super special. So I didn't really feel too negative or too positive about it. It was just like... So I must have been like pretty indifferent about it. I'm going to take now a little packing brush like the Worker Pro from Sonia G and I'm going to go into the shimmery lighter brown, chestnutty kind of brown shade. I really like this shade. And I'm going to apply this basically all over my lid and then blend it upwards towards the crease. It's question number eight, which is the last but one question. What's the makeup product you own that should be the first one thrown out in a declutter but you just can't do it. <laughs> there are probably several of those uh, in my collection, but uh, I would say probably something that's in my nostalgia drawer that I've had for a really long time. Okay, I found it and it's a very interesting one. It's this uh, Alchemy Highlighter Palette from Kat Von D. This is actually not super old. Let me put it back so we can continue chatting. In terms of its age, this palette is actually not really old, maybe 2016, 2017, which by my personal standards is not that long ago. I know that people on YouTube throw out things because they are a whole of three weeks old. Imagine the horror of owning something that's over a year old, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I don't really consider things from 2016, 2017 even to be that old. I have stuff like 
sugar pill quads that for sure are older because they're from 2014 but like eyeshadows can continue performing for a really long time um, the reason I think this thing should go into trash is first of all because Kat Von D is trash uh, and second of all because these highlighters are just so 2017 I don't really use these types of like blue green duochrome highlighters anymore the formula is a little bit powdery and a bit dated and like I said Kat Von D is trash and I dislike the woman with a passion but the reason I don't have the heart to throw this away is because Kat Von D was very hard to get a hold of here in the Netherlands and when this product was released there was basically no way for me to purchase it. I couldn't really get it in any sort of way. And then my friend Amber, uh, one of my uh, really really good friends that I had met at the time when I was into my loose indie eyeshadow phase and I was working together with Notoriously Morbid and Darling Girl Cosmetics, she sent me a little goodie bag including the alchemy palette from Kat Von D. It was the absolute sweetest thing ever and I just always deeply appreciate the gesture and because of that I keep this as a token of my friendship with Amber rather than anything else. Doesn't this look like so like sultry and so beautiful and elegant? I really I really like the tone of this brown eyeshadow don't come for me. Okay, my next move with this eyeshadow palette is also always the same. It is grabbing my Worker Pro brush, going into this sparkly shade, loading my brush with a little bit of that sparkly shade, and then spritzing with a bit of Fix Plus because I want a little bit more of like the wet sheen type of effect over top of that brown right here, more concentrated towards the center of the lid. And this shade has the most beautiful glimmer to it. It's not that McGrath kind of glimmer, but it's also like a step up from the Tom Ford glimmer. So just it just looks so beautiful and um, elegant twinkly. Or to use my new coined term, grown as Lady Sparkle. All right, for my next move, I'm going to take the Intensifies stick from Pat and shove it here underneath my lower lashes. And if I'm just sticking to this quad, I will also put the dark brown shade on my lower lashes. But not today. Today I'm going for a little lower lash line pop of color. And for that I'm going to use my single in Lapis Luxury from Pat McGrath Labs. Most of you will probably have this in your decadence palettes. And while doing that, let's go over the last question in the tag real quick. Question number nine. What is the first thing someone should know about your makeup? What is the first thing someone should know about your makeup? That in the case of fire I'll grab for my Pat McGrath palettes before I grab the child. I don't exactly know what they mean by this. So I'm going to assume that they mean something very important about my makeup collection or about my makeup style, in which case we're probably going to have to somehow make a reference to Pat McGrath Labs' makeup. Um, but like in all seriousness, if I had to give up all the other makeup, uh, especially eyeshadow, in my collection to only be allowed to own one brand, it would 100% be Pat McGrath Labs. Like I wouldn't even hesitate. There wouldn't be a moment where I would be like, oh no, but like the bronze palette from Natasha Denona or uh, the sorcery palette from Lisa Eldridge, and we're talking about palettes that I actually quite like. None of that would be happening. I would not even hesitate to tell you that you can just burn all of the other makeup, but please give me back my Pat McGrath treasures. I don't remember answering a bunch of these other questions, so maybe I have done something where I've talked about like firsts in makeup in a completely different context. Maybe not in the context of a tag, but just in the context of like a rambly video or something. Um, because I don't think I've done this tag before. Anyway, for my inner corner, I'm also going to do something that I kind of like always do, which is choosing some sort of like a really fun inner po corner pop of uh, color from my uh, singles collection of eyeshadows from indie brands, especially the more expensive ones. Looking at you, Cleona, right here. So I'm actually going to go into this shade from Cleona today in my inner corners because I think it's going to match really nicely the te teal blue theme 
And there is uh, something else I also really enjoy doing with this quad. I think it looks so beautiful with a variety of different like inner corner highlights. Um, I think I've done a video where I've popped this like lime greenish type of shade. I've tried this one as well. It's just a lot of fun to play around with inner corner pops of color when you're doing something really neutral on your eyes. And the best thing about this is that I finally get to use these extremely expensive single eyeshadows that I purchased that are otherwise rotting in my drawers. So here you have the final look on my lips. I chose for something a little bit like toasty and cinnamony. So I have cinnamon toast, quite ingenious of me, from uh, H&M, which is one of their cream lipsticks. I don't even know if these lipsticks exist anymore and they are offered by H&M. But if they are, these are some of the best affordable like cream lipsticks formulas cream lipstick formulas out there. I really love how this look turned out. I think Lapis Luxury really brought it home. And just a fun fact, so this is a Christmas present. This sweater is a Christmas present, but I requested it myself. It was on my wish list. Hubs got everything on my wish list, including this sweater. And um, can you guess the reason I purchased this sweater? If you guess that the reason is I want to wear Lapis Luxury more often, you would not be wrong. But Royal Jungle from Guerlain. Uh, you know what guys, I quite like it. I know it's really dumb to say this because this is so expensive and I can only get like the one look from it. Although this is my personal choice, okay? You can get more looks out of this. It's just that my personal choice is to always go for this like brown smoky eye because I just really like how it looks on me. But that's not the fault of the palette. You can do more things with it. Obviously with the color story you're sort of limited, uh, but it is my choice to always do the same look. So yes, it is a little bit of an expensive eyeshadow palette to do that one look with. But you know, it's a very reliable look. And I enjoy the formula. I think what I enjoy here the most are the formulas. This dark brown shade is just an absolute pleasure to work with. This uh, lighter brown shade just looks so flattering against my like brown eyes. Uh, this little topper moment is just the perfect amount of grown as lady sparkle. And the day will probably come when I'll also start appreciating this gold, but that day hasn't come yet. There is one thing though, I feel like this packaging could be a little bit heftier for the price. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this look. Do let me know what you thought about it. Uh, if you are a creator and you would like to also do this like makeup first tag, I will make sure to leave the original creator and the questions in my description box. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!